Hello friends, welcome to our session on career counselling called Pratibha Samvardhan. Dear friends, as you know, today we have with us in our studios Mr. Rakesh Bhatia and Mr. Rakesh Bhatia is giving us in-depth knowledge on emerging options in the area of technology. Dear friends, if you have any questions, you may talk to us through our toll-free number. Our number is 18001010430. I repeat, our number is 18001010430. So, as you have uh, given us um, in-depth knowledge on uh, the various areas, whether it be data science, artificial intelligence uh, and many other, uh, we would like to know what are the processes um, uh, regarding these uh, particular fields. Can you give us more information on that? Okay. So, uh, as I have given a general overview, like data science means analyzing data. So, let us now discuss what are the steps involved. Okay. Generally speaking, when we use data science, it is related to a problem area. Now, first of all, we define what is the problem, like what is the question which we are trying to answer. Okay? Then, as I said, we acquire data or we gather data around that business problem. For example, if a company wants to analyze from which area I am getting the best business or what are my most profitable products. So then it will have to acquire all the sales data. For example, for last six months or last one year, what are my sales? What products got sold? What are the numbers? What are the profit ratios? So similarly, if he collects all the data, the, the company collects all the data, then we can start with the data science process. So, first we defined a problem that okay, we want to analyze what are our best selling products. So, that is the business problem we are trying to solve. Now, second step, get some data around it. For last, last six months or last one year, we are trying to get the data regarding our sales. For example, in let us assume that we have four regions, north, south, east and west. In those four regions, this was the sale of say particularly these five products. So, once we gather the data, then we try to analyze and clean the data. So, what is it? Let me give you an example. As I mentioned earlier also, if there is a very simple Excel sheet you have wherein there is a data of say sales. So, in some regions, somebody might have put a wrong entry. For example, the average sale is 1000 and they might have put 0 or they might have forgotten to put some data on that. So, that is a big challenge whenever data science processes are running because the softwares are exact and they do not want a messed up or unclean data that is called unclean data. Okay? So, what we do is that either we can fill it up through average of that field for example, average sales is 500. If somebody has left the field, we can add 500 rupees, 500 as the data there. Or either we can delete the row, that data point can be deleted. But deleting the data point should be the last option. Because what we are getting is the more data have we have, the, the better analysis we can do. So, if we keep on deleting the rows or data, then we have less data. Which means that the analysis would be less accurate. Okay? Then, once we have the data and we clean the data, then what we do? Then we start to look at the data. For example, uh, what is the average? What is the highest? What is the lowest? Uh, are any fields which are repeating? Is there any data which is less useful or not useful? Maybe we can remove that and so on and so forth. Then, third process. Third process means we build a model. So, generally speaking, what happens is, when wherever we are doing to analyze, we are trying to either solve a problem or we are trying to predict something. Okay? So, once we want to predict something, for example, we say that our last three years sales has been such and such. But we want now to predict our sales for next, say one year or next two years. Just to give you a very common example, when you order something on Amazon, 
sometimes you will be surprised that the the product is delivered to you in couple of hours you know like in few hours it is delivered so you are surprised that how is this possible this is possible through data modeling and prediction what amazon does is that first is analyzes the history of that product for 6 months 1 year or 2 years based on the average orders it fulfills the warehouses so even if you have not ordered say 1000 pieces get sold in a month so it might order 700 or 800 initially which means that those pieces are lying there already so as soon as you order it is activated from the warehouse and it is delivered to you very fast so that is the kind of use case use case for data science prediction and visualization then once we predict you know like okay what will be the sale or what will be the order flow and then we judge the accuracy for example if we analyze that we will have 1000 uh, orders of say particular phone model but we overshot or we fell short by a big margin so we analyze 5000 but it was only 500 then it is a big problem okay but if the data is say the the prediction is say 90% accurate then it is fine 85% then it is fine 90 pluses or 95 it is a very good model which means that it is predicting but we have to keep in mind that situations change with time some data inputs might change so we have to keep on revisiting and keep on uh, iterating with our model iterating means we do it again and then we rebuild the model then we do it again and rebuild the model so this is the process of data science of course lot of mathematics a uh, lot of programming in for python is involved in all these processes and we use the main language which is being used nowadays is python python and its libraries so what are libraries so libraries are programs which are written for a specific purpose for example if we look at python library called pandas that is very useful for analyzing data frames okay uh, for example the library called matplotlib it is used for plotting plotting means visualization graphs charts etc so if you are learning that uh, python as well as stats you will be good in data science so uh, let us also you know like try to understand what is possible in terms of artificial intelligence right now so right now artificial intelligence can easily recognize faces images and emotions okay and it can transcribe speech you have maybe some of you have used chat gpt if you speak and then it can audio to text text to audio converting it to different languages then you must be aware of a uh, self driven car which is being tested on the roads right now madam it is almost a reality now so any maybe 3 or 3 to 5 years from now this will become a reality at least in us in india maybe uh, maybe couple of years later mm. okay so it is also able to ai is being used to discover new drugs it is also being so for example 6 months back a uh, google claimed that it has built a artificial intelligence ai which does better training better scanning of cancer than trained doctors so the question it raises a very important question if the ai does this what will be the doctor doing yeah so we have to be very careful there is also a concern that ai will take up jobs, jobs. so we can we will discuss that in the subsequent section but that is a very valid point okay uh, then it can analyze genetics and genetic data because it's a very huge data and it can predict diseases what kind of diseases you will have 5 years from now 10 years from now so that becomes a predictive thing uh it can also analyze social posts and for example there is a chance of unrest or a riot in a area so ai if we put at it 
it can analyze what are the words, what are the intentions and what are the emotions being discussed so that it can alert the authorities and they can take appropriate action. It can also trade stocks, it can also write software, it can write code, okay? it can also do legal research, it can do due diligence on mergers and acquisitions, it can also make legal summary of documents, it can play games, for example, you must have heard of uh, a game called Go, it's a Japanese game and chess and jeopardy, there have been many many competitions and it is uh, surprising or it is fortunate or unfortunate that now humans find it very difficult to beat AI in these games. It can also write code, it can write poem, it can create drama, it can create music. So that is the power of AI right now. So the next question comes, what do we need to know in order to get into these fields? Say data science, artificial intelligence, machine learning. So you need to know two basic things. So one is programming that can be done through either Python or R. But Python is more general purpose and it's a very useful language. It is used in many other places also. Uh, to learn this, either you can learn it through school. Online, I'll give you a very good medium, which is called W3Schools, which is a free of charge medium. You can go there, create an account, and then you can start using that. You also have HTML, JavaScript, and other areas. But I would like that you start first exploring with Python. And later on you can, it has some advanced lessons in machine learning, in SQL, the databases, etc. You can do all that. Second thing you need to know very well is probability and statistics. Probability is a small part, but statistics is a big data. part in uh, machine learning and also data science, AI, etc. So you should be very good sound in your basics. To cover your basics, what you can do? Basically, you can use a, again a very good free resource called Khan Academy. That's a very good world class resource. It has lessons divided in physics, chemistry, maths, etc. But you can use particularly maths, short videos, 7 to 10 minutes videos and then short quizzes. So it has very good uh, resource in terms of uh, basics, you know, like your fundamental concepts of maths, physics and chemistry. So that is what you need to do. Once you have done this, then probably you need to understand other stuff what you should do. Once you are proficient in say Python basics, you know also stats, then you can also start going to platforms like GitHub. GitHub is a kind of social platform for programmers. There programmers use and showcase their work. So if you have done a project, if you have done created a code, then you can showcase, you can upload that. Also there are conversation and threads which you can use to answer your questions. When you are starting as a programmer, you might have a lot of difficulty, lot of questions and all. You can use chat GPT, you can use GitHub, you can also use internet to answer your questions. Of course, it is very good to have a mentor if you can, then a mentor would also be very good. Okay. Then uh, another part is once you analyze the projects, there is a problem to convey this findings to a general population, which means management might not be so technical. So how do you convey them? These, this is done by what is called visualization tools. So these software packages essentially help you to build up data in terms of bar graphs, charts, line charts, etc. So that people can understand it quickly and easily. So what are those softwares which you can use? Mm, Excel is a very good software which you can use. But I would say that uh, a better software is Tableau. Tableau is a what is called a business intelligence software. What it does is that when once you feed data into it, it creates charts based on that. And based on those charts, it is easier for the management to understand what is happening. So Power BI, Excel and 
tableau these are the tools which you can utilize or which you should learn for visualization of the data uh next we can talk about iot applications as i said it is being used in healthcare so healthcare you know like lot of sensors as i said in smart watches it's a very simple example transportation we are using to track you know when you book a uber ride so that information is being displayed that where is the car right now and you you have lot of apps where you can track movement that is used in transportation logistics so uh, if a truck leaves somewhere or goods are also goods can also be tracked uh, some sensors can be put on them it is also being used in animal tracking a uh, lot of animals ma'am in the jungle or you know like leopards and cheetahs mm-hmm. they are being tracked right now so that technology is also based on iot and for security for example there could be a perimeter defined out of which if i go there will be alarm so that technology is also working on iot it is also being used to uh, measure various things in agriculture for example uh iot and ai combined we can predict uh, for example you will be finding that uh, weather predictions have become very accurate right now hmm. because there are lot of machines new machines they are also using ai they are also gathering lot of geographical data and based on that data we can predict with a f- good accuracy what will be the kind of weather that's pattern that's why uh, since sometimes we are getting messages on our phone yes. that the weather is going to be bad or it's going to be yes. it's going to rain so it's a part of the ai if yes. i'm not wrong yes yes so that is also a part of the process that is uh, done by disaster management authority of yes, the government exactly. of india and they will help you to warn if, mm-hmm. for example if in an area there is a warning of heavy rain mm-hmm. or they expect heavy rain there is a storm nowadays you will be finding that people are evacuated much in advance because we can get very fair and very good accuracy and mm-hmm. predictions also we can track animals down in the sea mm-hmm. we can track lot of say submarines and areas and aircrafts all that technology is a combination of uh, geographical systems ai iot etc a science is working continuously yes. and with the help of the technology now uh, every task is easier for us yes yes also there is a concern as you had mentioned in your uh, talks with me that there is there is a big concern that it will take up jobs exactly yes so i would like to answer that question uh, the thing is that when industrialization whenever there is a new wave there is always this fear because when machines came the humans many of the time the times humans were thinking that okay oh we will all be useless yeah. so it is not like that ai will take away some jobs for example the routine jobs will be taken away but then it will create new jobs hmm. for example let me give you an example so that stu- students and you know other people can understand see we keep on saying that you know for a, once chat gpt has come now content creators Exactly. journalists how will they work because you know what is happening is the work you used to do in 2 days 3 days it can be done in less than a minute mm-hmm. if you want a child to write an essay it can just give a prompt it will get the output mm-hmm. and then the writing the the job of content creators is in danger you know like for example they used to have a team of 50 exactly. people the research, or 100 people the content ka- uh, so though now you can give a prompt and get an output mm-hmm. now where is the need to hire that team i would say that first of all chat gpt is not accurate in many of the cases one two whenever it creates content there has to be a human content because that content as it is cannot be used so you have to tweak it you have to repurpose it mm-hmm. second please understand this that somebody you know like created this chat gpt exactly. by understanding the technology okay. so those people imagine chat gpt's founder sam altman his value was you know like x now it is 1000x 10000x as soon as chat gpt got released hmm. so by the use of technology his life is changing and his company is progressing in such a big manner so similarly those who will understand technology will benefit because they will know how to use it how to create different things how to solve different problems hmm. only danger is that if you are left behind behind you don't even understand basics you don't know how to use it 
you do not know how to utilize then it is a danger. If you are going with the trend and if you are understanding and you are using it then I think it will make your life easier Easy. and it might make it better in many ways. I believe uh, after talking to you, it's a theory of multiplication, how you multiply it and how you created a boom in the market. Yes. It will definitely uh, create more jobs uh, rather than killing jobs. Yes, yeah. to an extent, but not completely. I yes, would say. so it will, create, it will create many jobs, but it will take away some routine jobs. Hmm. For example, when you dial, as I said, when you dial a bank now, you will be mostly taken to a chatbot. It is not a real person. Hmm. So, 7 out of 10 times that chatbot will be able to answer your questions mm -hmm. and then it is the end. So, if your team size were you know say 1000 people, now you require maybe only 200 or 300 mm -hmm. because then the number of uh, calls coming will be reduced significantly. But then those people please understand that if you have trained for uh, a very new job which has come up, let, us, let me give you an example, is AI prompt engineers. So, what is a prompt engineer? So, chat GPT uh, works on prompts. Prompts means the questions you ask the chat GPT, the large language model which it is. So, if you ask wrong questions, you will not get the correct input. So, technically you have to understand how to ask a good question, question. so that you can get a very good answer mm -hmm. and that has become a job. To give you an example, very good prompt engineers are now getting salaries over one and a half lakh dollars in US. They have started doing it. So, it is a new section or new job which has been created by ChatGPT. So, this is one of the examples and many new jobs will be created. So, uh, one need not fear, just understand the technology and be with it so that you can use it and also you can make a good career out of it. Definitely and this is um, what we personally believe to every end there is a new beginning. Yes. We have to look for that new beginning yes. from where it is coming out. Yes. So, sir, what else for the computer science students do uh, believe that uh, we have covered the everything here? Uh, so, uh, I would say that generally speaking, I would like to give some common or general pointers also. Definitely. Where, you know, like students how should they look at a career, you know, mm -hmm. like, for example, students normally they get hung up on subjects. What are they trying to say that I love physics, I love bio. I believe that until and unless you want to be a scientist, it does not really matter. First, first you should think is that I am going to join, for example, a student in class 10th. He is going to join the workforce 7 to 10 years from now. Hmm. So, school, graduation, post-graduation maybe. So, then 8 to 10 years from now. Now, he should ask the question, the right question to ask is, how will the job change 8 years, 10 years down the line? What kind of skills will be required in my jobs? Hmm. So, if they do that, they will be in a much better place than if, if keep on running after physics or I love mm -hmm. this, I don't love that, I like that, I don't like that or even my papa is saying this or you know like my parent are giving me this advice, it does not matter. What will matter is that at the right time, if you have the right skill set, you will be paid, you will be benefited by mm -hmm. this. So, for doing that, I would say that they should participate in lot of different, different activities. Apart from their academic things, they should do a lot of different non-academic activities. Skill enhancement basically yes. in different areas. So, skill enhancement, how they can do? First of all, as I said, because tech is a big area, they should be familiar with programming. Mm -hmm. I have told W3 schools, this is a very good resource. They can try it for free. They can have some familiarity. Although, I am not recommending that everybody become a programmer. But, they should be familiar with it. Secondly, they should be familiar with a very big bold trend which is startups. So, startups are creating lot of value in tech areas, in non-tech areas. But please understand that the problems they are solving is again with the use of tech. So, wherever you go, they are creating a lot of values. Just to give you an example, I have come here by a Uber taxi. Earlier, when we had to find that was a black and yellow taxi, mm -hmm. it was very tedious. First, you had to go there. Sometimes it was not available. Sometimes the taxi was broken. It was not working you properly. You have to negotiate with the driver. Yeah, so all those things. So now they have solved that problem. You just click, use that app, and then your life is easy. Now, but that, please understand, very strong component of technology is working there. 
yeah it has a lot of geographical information systems it has an app it is a very big server they have exactly and it can change uh, um, rates of rides based on the demand which is coming all those things are there so there is a lot of ai there is a lot of data science built into that the problem is about transportation but tech always comes if you look at education similar stories by jews or big companies which have created huge value okay now when i am saying that students should explore entrepreneurship also students should explore tech area also students sh should explore maybe stock market play some stock market games so i would say that they should go to a lot of summer schools spend two weeks three weeks doing a subject it could be environment it could be science it could be physics it could be mathematics in india or outside india they should do internships what is an internship you work for a short period at a company so it could be online it could be offline it could be paid it could be unpaid so but these things will help them understand what kind of career i would like what kind of uh, job i would do what kind of money i can hope to make what, what does a real job look like after mm -hmm. doing internship for one or two months they would understand that there is a discipline required in the office this is how the structure of the office is Definitely. and what can i expect Definitely. So these are the things which they should keep doing on the side. Definitely, and the objective is to build your better, better you is the most important thing, and you should keep on working on yourself. As Mr. Rakesh Bhatia himself said, skill enhancement as well as what do you want to do, why you want to do. Please keep asking questions. Uh, uh, please ask questions, and uh, when you will be able to answer the questions. definitely that field would be right for you so friends we believe that you might have ga gathered lots and lots of information there is lot to talk more and uh, we would be calling mr Pr rakesh bhatia once again to our studios and would be discussing more that. once again and friends if you have any question any queries or if you have feedback do write to us at ccgurukul.live@gmail.com we would be meeting again soon we would be uploading this lecture on youtube keep watching us thank you